Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I've got myself a movie, I've got myself a Gary, and I'm about to drop a review, and I'm about to drop a review. And I'm Gary. And today, we're going to review and discuss Ankle Biters, which came out in 2002, written, directed, and starring Adam Minarovich. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Drexel, played by Adam Minarovich. Drexel is a half-breed vampire whose job is to go around and destroy dwarf vampires. A group of dwarven vampires have got themselves an ancient vampire relic sword, which contains the last drop of blood from the last tall vampire. They hope to use this blood to turn other tall people into vampires and hopefully take over the world. This planet has come down with a plague. Three feet tall, with two inch fangs, and an undying thirst for blood. And we're here to stop them. So this is a film that uh, came out, I believe, at the tail end of the VHS era. (laughs) This was the sort of film that you would find in your blockbusters or your video rental stores in the rental bin, you know, of schlocky, homemade kind of movies that somehow got distributed. Yeah. And somehow this film managed to survive its translation into DVD and is still circulating the world today. (laughs) You could somewhat call this a cult movie who does <laughs> the filmmakers oh, right, okay, okay. <laughs> do you recognize the lead actor at all no he was ed in the first season of the walking dead it was carol's abusive husband no that's this guy he's the writer producer director of this film well at least <laughs> he went on to something better yes indeed <laughs> <laughs> we got eaten by zombies and we never saw him again no yeah no but in this, he plays this vampire hunter with his sidekick, T-Bone. T-Bone. <laughs> and uh, you know that this film is going to be awful. <laughs> and I mean awful from its opening shot, which is this wildly shaking camera that has sa- the sound. It sounds sped up and you have this high pitched giggling laughter yeah. over the top and I was like oh no what what is this <laughs> and for the first 4 or 5 minutes of the film we're following this character running around being chased by these little vampires and yeah. straight away I was just like it's broad daylight. Yep, yep, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm like, okay, so we're looking at the severe limitations of these filmmakers yeah. that clearly had no boom mic. Yep. You know, they had the most basic of video camera equipment, yep. no tripod, no lighting whatsoever. Did the actors even have any skill of None acting? None of these like, were actors. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then once they chase him, they get they chase him to like an underpass. Yeah. And they surround him. And then the vampires jump him and start biting at his ankles. And then the camera shows the wounds and it's just blood on top of his clothing. Yeah. There's no neck mark punctures. Nope. There's no shredded clothing. Nope. And you can see the vampires are just mock biting. Yeah, you you can literally almost hear the director behind the camera going, Move more! Move more! I need to get more of this shot before I edited it. Because... Like... I'm going to start right now, right at the start of the review, before I get too wound up or upset, that I do kind of respect what this guy did or wanted to do. Because, you know, like I've seen a lot of shit fucking movies and it's been a while since I turned a film on and in the first five minutes want to immediately turn it off again because the camera is shit, the lighting is shit, The editing is shit. The audio is shit. The acting is shit. Like, 
I honestly was ticking these boxes off as the film started and I hadn't even met Drexel yet and I was like <laughs> holy fucking shit what even what even made it fucking worse was when Drexel does turn up yeah you know <laughs> and he has a gunfight battle right at the beginning the guns are plastic yeah <laughs> like not even like not even like not even unnoticeable plastic like you had to look and go oh it kind of no it sounds and looks plastic but the director the actor the main guy is doing his absolute best to make himself look cool to make you want to watch the rest of the movie so it's i the, got the long black cloak uh, you know the sunglasses yeah the shotgun with its awful spread spread effect the terrible voice he puts on with it as well <laughs> but then i was just like well he's the only one who's acting yeah <laughs> And then when he shoots that vampire and he rolls backwards, I was just like, there's not even any kind of blood effect or damage effect. The clothing's not been torn. It's yeah. just like, this is not going to get better, is it? No, no. Yo, shortcake. Like this. We cut to the same four vampires that we saw at the beginning meeting up with a couple of guys on a bridge like I'm like gangsters yeah like like I, was... I, I kind of got that like they're Italian mafia gangsters he was like a cross were... between Dennis Hopper and Stan Lee and the other guy was like Kevin Bacon yeah <laughs> yeah and I'm like wow you guys really just got picked off the side of the road didn't you the director was just sat there one day writing a script looked up saw these two guys and went hey you want to be in a movie right you yeah. know what do we have to do? Well, you have to turn up on this train, on on this train track, and then the same four main vampire dwarfs are going to come out of n literally nowhere. They're just going to appear, and they're going to take this sword off you. The sword looks plastic and like a child's toy, and this is where they attack the the two main guys and bite their ankles. And it's so bad. It's so fucking bad. Like, the guys are armed with guns, and they've already shot one of the vampires, and he's just got back up. You couldn't beat them to fucking death with the handle of the gun? No. Like, the vampires... I know. He stood there with the gun, he shoots him, and the vampires run at him. Oh, and, yeah. And take him down. Yeah, like, you didn't yeah, even yeah. shoot a he second time. Yeah. But uh, Stan Lee gets killed. Yeah. But Kevin Bacon does a run for it, and ends up jumping off the bridge into the water. Oh, yeah! <laughs> like, we never see him again, but he survives. Right, he got away. He got... Like, but this sword is, oh my God, I couldn't believe it when I actually heard it. I had to like re-listen to it again. You know, when they explain, Drexel explains that the vampire dwarfs can only turn other dwarfs, dwarven people. They can't turn like tall people into dwarfs. So they need this sword to stab into a guy to turn this tall guy into a vampire so he can kill other tall people and turn them into vampires. I was like, okay, movie, this is mind-blowing. Like, you have just literally taken vampire lore and went, we don't need that! <laughs> like, do you remember no, ages ago? It's a case of... We can't afford that. Do you remember ages ago when you, me, and Hannah sat here and you guys were giving me shit about vampire law? Like, yeah. like how it's set. Uh, That's the reason why I was we like, no, like they vampires. Change, they change things. These guys don't. They don't give two shit. No, they don't. There is an awful, awful sequence about <laughs> midpoint in the movie yeah. where they're sat and Drexel is explaining the vampire law. Yeah. And... It's inaudible. Like, there is, you know, the camera is far away from the characters as possible. Yeah. And the direction of the mic on the camera is not picking up what's being said. I had to crank my volume all the way up. Oh, yeah. Only to immediately turn it back down again for the next sequence. Yeah. Because some annoying, obnoxious music would, would kick in at five times the volume of that piece of dialogue. Yeah. And, you know, already I was like, oh, okay, so this film is a rip-off of Blade yeah. and a rip-off of John Carpenter's Vampires. Yeah. You know? 
Um, and he explains in the in this film that yeah, everything we know about vampires is was bullshit. It's, it's all bullshit. been made up from yeah, television all, yeah. and everything else because yeah. these vampires walk around in sunlight. Yeah. They're not a, they're not affected by garlic. They don't need an invitation. Yeah. They don't cast reflections, and wooden stakes don't do shit. But. If you are a, a height disabled person and you get turned into a vampire by another height disabled person, then you can't just turn anybody into a vampire. If if a if a vampire dwarf attacks a tall person, that person dies. He doesn't get infected by the virus or anything and comes back. He he will die. You need a tall person to bite another tall person in this world to make more tall vampires. And that's what the dwarf vampires want they want more tall vampires to help them fight against drexel because drexel is tall and he's just gonna whoop all their asses and he's a half-breed he explains that his great-grandmother or whatever was attacked and vampired and he was born a half-breed blade story kind of thing but i honestly blanked that bit out but yeah. thanks for that yeah yeah, yeah. I, was, I was paying attention yeah <laughs> it's like oh there's a bit of story <laughs> because otherwise we just get drexel and t-bone going to the bar and drinking tequila and they're interrogating the bar the bartender because they want to know why he's giving out flyers to people who are going to these raves and getting killed by vampires fuck that scene i'm sorry <laughs> Sorry, you built up, you built me up to it, man. Fuck that fucking scene. Fuck that fucking scene. This bit of music played. Oh, this bit of music. When this bit of music played, I lost all hope for the movie. I just fucking wanted to give up. I almost called Gary and said, nope, 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 nope. But I, I had to. I had to. The piece of audio they play is a ripoff of the Duke nukem shrapnel city raw meat level music that they played on the playstation one of duke nukem that that intro that that guitar bit that that dun -a -dun -a -dun, that loop in that movie to rip off from a game and they use it they use it a lot <laughs> it so many times that every time it, I heard it I'm like please change into something else because it just loops over and loops and, over. <laughs> and loops and loops and loops and I'm like just change to something else for fuck's sake anything they can't they need to pad this movie I know <laughs> so a bar fight breaks out <laughs> Oh, it's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. I mean, I did, I did kind of laugh once because uh, I, I mean, I, I, I saw it coming. Yeah. And uh, you know, I just want to point out the editing in this sequence is also just so awful. Where <laughs> you know they're interrogating the bartender and it keeps cutting to other patrons sat at the bar, <laughs> just looking really awkward. Yes, yeah, the bartender's going to just stood there like, like you're interrogating me. <laughs> no emotion. No. But then they all, you know, the other patrons start trying to leave the bar. Yeah. But yeah. Drexel just starts knocking them all out as well. And you see this woman get up to oh. go and get out. And he just clocks her as well. I did that. I did that. He, he, he turns to T-Bow and he's like, whoop. Whoop. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. I was like, I don't, I don't really like Drexel. No. T-Bone's kind of okay. Yeah. Like, he's got a little, a little bit of uh, emoting going on. Yeah. He's trying to develop this sidekick character. Um, which was kind of fun. But didn't he get bitten by one of the vampires at one point? He did, yeah. But, but he didn't get turned? No. Because he was all, he's also a vampire already. He's a half-breed too. Oh, is he? <laughs> I didn't know his... Uh, I think so. Times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's a half-breed as well. I'm pretty sure he was. I mean, I only just watched the film. Like, yeah, remember. like, yeah, oh, God. <laughs> the film will turn your brain to mush. Especially... Especially those action sequences where characters jump up onto high oh ledges. <laughs> yeah. And you know instantly just by looking at this blurred footage that it is reversed footage. Reversed. <laughs> and they were like, that's a neat trick. We'll replicate that several times throughout the film. Like Drexel and the leader vampire. Well, no, Drexel and the, the tall vampire have a fight on a bridge, which is really shit. And the dwarf vampires all sat in the car. And I swear, 
At the end of the fight, before they escaped, Drexel just stole the hat off of the leader. Yeah. And yeah. put the hat on. Like, that's how good that fight sequence was. The only bit I really remember is him stealing the hat off the guy at the end. That's it. <laughs> like, I got really confused with who the fuck Mr. Marcus was until, like, halfway through the movie. Well, he turns up, doesn't he, when they have that confrontation and he shoots mm. a crossbow yeah. at Drexel. Yeah, because he's trying to. he's been trying to kill Drexel for, like, years. He, he's another vampire hunter. Yeah. I call him the Rob Zombie character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. He's like, you'll, you'll be Rob Zombie. Mr. Marcus, that's all, that's all right. I remember. <laughs> but that whole fight sequence where they're fighting the vampires, an arrow gets shot at him, and then he turns to him and he's like, oh, I'll get you later, and it fades away. Yeah, that's like, it. They I was like, just... so did they all just decide to just walk yeah, away from each other at that walked... point? Yeah, that's how I felt. They all just <laughs> went away. Like like I said, when Drexel stole the hat it's off Saturday of the Saturday morning dwarf, cartoon. When they, when they stole it off the vampire dwarf, I'm like, why aren't they coming back for the hat? Right, right. Where's my brother at? Hey, hey, hey. Where's my brother? Hey, lady, you got the wrong guy. He took my brother. You got the wrong guy. If you want to know where your brother is, come with me. But anyway, so, so the sister of the guy who's been turned into a tall vampire is now hanging out with Drexel and T-Bone um, and Mr. Marcus. And they come up with the plan that they have to head to Club Chaos. Because this is where the tall vampire is going to go. And he's going to turn a lot of tall people into vampires. And they want to stop it. So the guys go through a bit of a, an arming up sequence. And it's terrible. <laughs> like I've seen a lot of arming up se sequences in my time. From crappy 80s ones like in Chopping Mall. All the way up to the fucking Army of Darkness Bruce Campbell amazingness of making that fucking metallic hand. This one is nothing like those. Nothing. It's just three guys stood around a table of props. <laughs> right. <laughs> and realizing that they haven't got enough props to pad out this scene of arming up. But it lasts like five minutes. Oh, God. It was like ages. <laughs> You're watching all the shells get yeah. loaded into the shotgun. Oh, God. Them testing the tips of the bolts that oh, they've got. <laughs> God. But they leave T-Bone and the sister at their hideout. And they head off to Club Chaos. And while they're there, the vampires turn up at the hideout and kill T-Bone. Yeah. Which was a bit... Was a bit yeah, upset. I was a little sad, but I saw it coming immediately. Oh, totally! It like, it's the Whistler character, yeah. you know, from Blade. Like, yeah. Exactly, that's what... But, like, it was that one point in the movie where I didn't give a fuck about anything. And now that character's died, I'm like, oh, I kind of want him back. Yeah. But they get to Club Chaos and it's like a social club. Like, the director went, we need to make this look like a club, so we're going to put this woman in leather in a cage. I applaud this decision. <laughs> and then everybody stood around her dancing. Like, what was with the woman who was twerking, like, right, right. up to the cage? She liked the woman in the cage, too. Yeah, but, like, it, it was like, like, I looked at that actress, and it was like, I'm going to be in this fucking film. And you're going to remember me. <laughs> you're going to remember me. And then... Tall, bold, and vampiric turns up with the fucking... With the posse. With the posse. And he just goes around and just starts biting people. Which Drexel and Mr. Marcus turn up to fight. And the posse and tall vampire fuck off. Yeah, again. Again. <laughs> but now the guys have to deal with the group that yeah. have been turned. And it's, it's awful. Again, yeah. like, you know... You, there is no sense of any kind of fight choreography or direction or staging or blocking for any of these fight sequences. It is some of the worst fight stuff ever put onto film and released and sold to people. It is, it is, it's, it's not laughably bad. No. It's no. just fucking ah. dreadful oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's painful to watch because there's terrible sound effects terrible acting yeah. like you know some you just hope for a film to be so bad that it's good and this film just it it can't it can't achieve that no it just can't you're just dumbfounded that they just went yeah that's okay and let's let it go let's go let's go because we're gonna sell this movie to somebody <laughs> and somebody's gonna fucking buy it Hair 
Oh my fucking lordy lord. Three feet tall, two inch fangs. Fuck me in the fucking asshole. Terror comes in small packages. <laughs> so, Drexel and Marcus, you know, they've, they've dealt with the vampires at the club and then they've headed back to their base and they've realised that T-Bone is dead and so they've had to call in the cowboy. The what? The cowboy, this legendary vampire slayer who flies a gyrocopter <laughs> and he's going to come in and help them fight off hordes of vampires. Either that's where all the money went oh, yeah. or the cowboy actually owns that gyrocopter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they, 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 the sister of Rath, the tall guy who'd been turned into a vampire, she's been held captive, and so they all go to defeat them. And like I said, they kept playing that fucking Duke Nukem tune over and over and over again in different sequences, especially coming up to this, this end, because they've managed to turn a biker clan into vampires. Or, or the biker clan's just hanging out with the dwarf vampires, because... You couldn't actually tell if the bikers were vampires or not because none of them I had makeup. I think they were vampires. Yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah, I assumed that, dude. It was so shit. I assumed that. Yeah. I assumed that. <laughs> they only had like four pairs of vampire teeth, so, you know. Yeah, and, they, and one pair of contact lenses. Yeah. <laughs> but they just had to have this massive fight. I really enjoyed Drexel getting hit by the car. <laughs> Oh no, the sped up footage again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it was terrible, but he he, he put his back into it. He, he really did. Drexel has been running around the whole entire movie with like an anti-vampire serum. Yes. You know, and every now and again... It's the only way to kill vampires. Yeah, yeah. Well, like... like the, they make it like a big point, but in this so, so low budget, terrible movie, this big point is almost missable because every now and again you see him like tranquilize a vampire and you're like, oh, what's that? They never do anything. The vampires don't burn or melt or explode or anything. They literally, the actors just lie down on the floor. Um, but as he's about to take out the tall vampire, the tall vampire like flicks it and injects Drexel. And so... You literally get this awesome fucking line where the guy goes, huh, either this is going to kill him or it's going to do something it's gonna to him. It's going to make him stronger. Make him stronger. Well, guess what? Like, shock horror, he doesn't die. And he, he gets back up and yeah. then he throws the uh, the thing at the other vampire yeah. and kills him. Yeah. Gets on his motorcycle and rides away. Yeah. The end. The end. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, wait, don't forget. Nine months later. Oh, yeah. Nine yeah. months later, because that's what we needed in this film, was an extension to this already terrible fucking ending, was nine months later they come across... One of the vampire dwarfs who survived or escaped or or like I totally forgot what sequence he was in to, to do this. But he turns up and they're about to shoot him and that's when it ends. Sequel bait. <laughs> oh God no. Oh God no. <laughs> well it's been 20 years. I don't think we're getting a sequel. I fucking yeah. <laughs> well in what's your most memorable sequence from the film? mulling it over like I'm thinking like I'm taking my time trying to be respectful nothing <laughs> sorry did I scare you were you all kind of sitting there wondering what awesome fucking greatness I could take from this movie mm, nothing zilt zada nada blip 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 yours Oh, the girl clad in leather dancing in oh, a yeah. cage. Like, that was, that was yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Was... And uh, I think one of the... I can't remember if it was one of the vampires. One of the characters goes to touch her. And she uh, she slaps him away or beats him down. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy, <laughs> he goes to touch her. And she's like, yeah, you can't touch this. She talked a hell of a lot through she that did, sequence. Yeah. Yeah. She, I think I can't remember if she kicked ass or not. If she was I in that so. rape scene. I think, she, I think, I think she, she helped them out. And then she... I was hoping that she'd continue in the yeah. rest of the film. But 
she disappears into the shadows along with a bunch of other characters. I as honestly well. thought it was the sister, but then I realised no. that the sister was at the pineapple. Well, she got killed. captured. Yeah, yeah, captured. I was like, oh, it's a completely different actresses. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I can list my my least favourite sequences from do the film. It, <laughs> do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Absolutely terrible slow motion reversed backflips. Yeah. Endless driving down the roads. Yeah. Pointless cutaways. Yeah. <laughs> that rave scene that was trying to uh, replicate the sequence from Blade. Yeah. <laughs> and that climactic battle sequence at the end, which just was not a climactic battle no. sequence. No, like, like you really think <laughs> about you it. You saw all the bikers turn up yeah. and driving around in a circle. I can just imagine them there just like, yeah, we'll just drive around like eight or nine times. Yeah, yeah, just keep going. Yeah. So you look scary. Ooh, vampires in the middle of the day. Ooh. <laughs> At least I can say it was only an hour and 28 minutes long. Oh, God, it <laughs> felt like fucking days. <laughs> days. Oh, my God. Well, Ian, do you recommend Ankle Biters? <sighs> Respectively, no. Uh, I would like to, though, point out that, obviously, this is a guy who, you know, who wrote it and starred in it and financed it and put it together and made something. So he's got that. Um, but no, just no, it's terrible. The camera work is terrible. The audio is terrible. The editing is terrible. The acting is terrible. The whole idea behind it is terrible. The length of it is one hour and 27 minutes too long. Out of a one hour and 28 movie. <laughs> um, just the fact that like, I might have held a teeny weeny 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 little bit of respect for this movie. If they hadn't stole music from one of my all time <laughs> favourite games. Like tech, if Tekken. If Tekken wasn't going to survive ripping shit from John Carpenter and Godzilla. Ankle Bios isn't going to survive this fucking shit. Don't fucking watch it. I'd happily watch Uncut Gems again. And I'd, then I'd kill myself. I'd watch Adam Sandler and Sandy Wexford. Which was 2 hours and 15 minutes long. And that was marginally more entertaining than this. It's not a horror. It's not a comedy. It's nowhere in between. It's a school project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit, we got too much to worry about this bullshit. Let's get out of here. I categorically <laughs> cannot <laughs> recommend ankle biters. Nope. The only way I could recommend ankle biters is if you are an aspiring filmmaker and you have no budget and you want to make a horror movie watch this to see some terrible camera work with awful zooms rushed panning shots listen if you can to the terrible dialogue the audio levels range all over the place from deafening to near silence it's Headache inducing. The acting and direction of the action scenes is utterly dreadful. It's poorly staged and performed. And the line deliveries are wooden and the characters are incredibly unlikable. It's embarrassing. This is absolutely oh. one of the worst films I've ever seen. And you have to see it to believe it. I was happy for it to at least achieve the so bad it's good level of cheap exploitation fare and it doesn't even come close. There is no sign of talent anywhere and I was wishing for my time spent back as the credits flashed onto the screen. I, as I always do, appreciate low budget independent filmmakers getting a film finished and released into the world. Yeah. It's no easy feat. So, yeah, well done there. Yeah, well Still, done. Still, though, this film fucking sucks. What? This film? The one you own on DVD? This film? Thanks for watching Off the Shelf Reviews. Yeah, it's on DVD! Your people, I don't believe in vampires, I believe in cash.
I've traveled halfway around the world to bring you this artifact. So you show me the money or you die. Show me the money.